Welcome to a new video about differential amplifiers. This is our example number one where we discuss the MOSFET differential amplifier. And we start again with a very simple situation where we have an ideal current source here, which is the tail current for our differential pair. Of course, we will work out in this example the calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So our example, we have the circuit here. You see again a similar configuration as we have discussed for the BGT differential pairs. You see the two N channel MOSFETs, enhancement type, the threshold voltage, the conduction parameter and the channel line modulation for each transistor is given M1 and M2. They are matched so they have exact same parameters. So two volts for the threshold voltage and a conduction parameter of 25 milliamps per square volt. And the channel length modulation, there is no channel length modulation, that means lambda is zero. The RD, both uh, these two uh, resistors are 10 kilo ohms, when so we have the VDD and VSS 20 and minus 20 volts. What we like to know is the balanced differential mode voltage gain for this situation, and so the balanced co mode voltage gain for this situation. Again, the M1 and M2 are matched. So let's see what we have. The solutions first, the calculations. Now, the as said before, M1 and M2 are matched, that means, and they are also biased at the same potential, meaning that the voltage at this node and also the voltage at that node, the difference here, the gate to source and also the gate to source for the M2, they're exact same, that means they have also the similar uh, or the same GM, the transconductance. So the transconductance of the G M1, which is GM1, will be the same as that of the uh, transconduction of M2. So defining just one GM will be just GM1 is equal to GM2 will be just GM and that will be calculated using this. This is only valid in the saturation region of operation for this current uh, calculation. So we need to also use that here. So do we have now the GM? Okay. Now you see here an I source one. So there's actually the source current here for the M1 and source current for M2. But since the gate currents are zero which is not the case for the pgt because then we have some base currents then the id the drain current of m1 is equal to the source current of m1 and a drain current of m2 is equal to the source current of m m2 so that's actually just a symmetrical device here without any gate current at dc okay so id1 is equal to id2 that's nice and that will be done also in the symmetric operation which is this circuit because we see here the tail current, which is ideal 2 milliamps, will be then just half of that. It will be then 0.002. So 2 milliamps over 2 will be just 1 milliamp. So we know 1 milliamp will be flowing in this branch, and also 1 milliamp will be flowing in that branch. But there is also 1 milliamp here, and 1 milliamp they are exact same because the gates are 0 amps. Then we have the following. The GM will be then, using this formula, is then 2 times the square root of the KN times ID1, or KN times ID2, it doesn't matter. And we know the Kn, which is then 0 0.025 times 10 to the power minus 3, you get here 0 0.01 Siemens or 10 millisiemens. Okay, now we have the necessary parameter for our first calculation of the question A, which is the balanced differential mode voltage gain. In a similar form as we did for the BGT differential pairs, that's just the differential mode output voltage divided by the differential mode input voltage, which is shown here VOD over VID. Again, there is a minus sign because there is an inversion. So it will be the minus GM, which is GM1 or GM2, that doesn't matter, times the RD. Now we know GM, we know RD, so we can calculate this. This will be then minus 100 exactly. Okay. The co mode voltage gain, that is in the first case for the single ended output, will be given by the VO1 over the co mode input. By the way, if you have a co mode input, both inputs are connected together and then connected to one source not between them let's say in a differential format and this is the formula when you use single ended output so you measure at this node or you can also measure at that node it doesn't matter because they are the same but this vo1 is also vo2 as said before and that is i will get back to this rq, RQ uh, in a minute since vo1 is equal to vo2 that is also defined as the output comma mode voltage and this RQ is the output bit of this current source. But since this is an ideal current source, an ideal current source has infinite output dependence. That means we have this RO here, which will be then our RQ. And that means this RO will be then infinite also. 
So this RO is actually your RQ. So you can read this as RQ here. That means, again, changing fr from the single end to the balance mode, because that is the same, and going to the VOC from VO1, and also putting in here the infinite, we get this expression, which is of course mathematically not uh, uh, possible to do this like that, but uh, that's fine for now. And that will be, in this case, approaching zero or exactly zero. So we don't have any common mode voltage gain if you use an ideal current, so which is of course what we like to have. Because when you now calculate the common mode reduction ratio for this case, then it will be differential voltage gain over the common mode voltage gain will be infinite. And it is of course what we want. So as high as possible, the common mode rejection ratio. Now bringing the results here and also the drain current and the DC, let's first look at the simulation result for the DC analysis. Now we have the left side for the differential mode and the right side for the common mode. What you see is the following, the ID1 and ID2, there are each 1000 microamps or 1 milliamps, so they're exact same. You also see that the common mode operation is exact same. So you can see that the differential in the common mode in a DC analysis or DC operation work the same. You see here the common mode signal here connected as said before between the two gates here connected together and then one source connected here. So we can say this is perfectly fine for our drain currents. There's more information there, but that is not necessary at the moment. Let's also look at the transfer response because we like to check the gains here. First, the differential mode. What do we see? There, is, there are more plots here, but let's focus on the drain current first. I mean the ID, uh, VID, which is a differential mode input voltage, which has a peak of 10 millivolts and has a frequency of one kilohertz. So this is a blue line. So it is 10 millivolts peak, so 20 millivolts peak peak. And uh, this one dark red is our differential mode output voltage, which is one volt peak inverted that's why we have this minus and it is two volts peak peak so when you now do the calculation differential mode voltage gain is vod over vrd which is then minus and then output peak peak divided by the input peak peak will be exactly 100 minus 100 as we have calculated so this is checked the next one is our transfer, transfer response so the circuit has changed you see the connection here again for our common mode but now you see that the Common mode input voltage has increased. That is purposely done to see the difference, really the output uh, more clearly. Now 5 volts peak, peak, so 10 volts peak peak. But the output, VO1, and also the VO2 are exact same. So it is the exact same shape, but this is just something which is at uh, fluctuating and very small fluctuation at 10 volts. So there's nothing here actually, so fluctuating. So you can say this is just 10 volts. And that is 10 volts, but the difference is almost nothing. So you can say, how much is this? Now you can say this is the fluctuation here. That's actually what you need to look at, not the absolute value. So the fluctuation here, so the, from this maximum minus the minimum, is almost zero. Maybe it's just a couple of femto volts. So we can say this is zero divided by 10, and it will be just zero. So that's also what we have seen in the calculations before. So this is also checked. All right, this was our first example about the MOSFET differential pair using the ideal current source. And we have discussed the balance differential mode and also the balance common mode voltage gains. And now we can calculate the required DC operation for this circuit. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. See you next time in another video.